Aquigration to Granada versus Real Madrid. But as for Real Madrid, they are conditioning themselves for the Champions League final. Carlo Ancelotti can afford to make rotations, and even with that Ali Moreno, 4 0 win. Well, it's nice to rotate when you have players of the caliber of, say, for example, Raheem Diaz. And if you have a player that can come off the bench and do the things that he's been doing, obviously it makes it a whole lot easier for Carlo Ancelotti. Look, the starting 11 today for Real Madrid, while it was an alternative starting 11, as compared to Granada, hey, it's a bunch of world beaters. Look, there's nothing to say here than the fact that Granada already relegated, gave a five for the first 30 minutes or so, and then the quality of Real Madrid took over, and players that don't usually get an opportunity get an opportunity to play, extended minutes, Brahim Diaz, Fran Garcia, Jose Luzon, and so forth. An expected result from Real Madrid, an expected performance. As for Granada, thanks for coming. We appreciate your efforts. And now off to the segunda. Yeah, tough day for... So one thing I say, despite we played almost B team for Real Madrid, if you see our lineup, first 11, most of the players, they are not first 11 players, right? But despite that, I would argue that this 11 is still better than most of the teams that La Liga has. Also, going to this match, we have nothing to play for, right? Because we already won the La Liga, so our La Liga season is over. Now, only thing is that all the fringe players who did not get enough game time over the season, for them, is a chance to show something. We're going to have a tough day for those fans as well, but they still found it within them, Luis Garcia, who is also with us, to give Luka Modric a stand innovation today. Yes, of course. Uh, everywhere that uh, Luka Modric goes, deserves that. He's been a, play, a player who leaves uh, an amazing legacy. Um, that doesn't mean that he's going to retire, but at least uh, so far what it looks is that uh, he's going to leave uh, the club at the end of the season. And he's a player who every single time he's been on the field, he's been showing his class. He's been a gentleman. He's never been in, in a situation away from, from what it is the most important is football. And of course, everyone, everyone that loves the sport uh, kind of likes to, to, to congratulate him, to say a, uh, have a, a good farewell. And we all enjoy what Luca Mori does when he's on the field. And in one seventy today, he shows his class. So I heard a rumor that this could be last season by Luca. I mean, what a career he had with us, with Real Madrid. That's an insane career. Now, every era has to come to an end. So as much as it's really sad for us as a fan, as a Real Madrid fan, I'll say life is like this. People come, people go. Legends come, legends go. This is the part of our life cycle. Adagula to make it 2-0 here. Brahim Diaz starts the sequence, overlapping run down the left-hand side from Fran Garcia, who was always willing to make this sort of run. And then Adagula, the key here is the initial first touch that sets up in one fluid motion the second touch to the far post to nothing. So today we have so many goals. Brahim scored a solo goal, beautiful solo goal. But let's focus on Ada's goal. His positioning was just perfect here. Also, when he was scoring this goal, there were almost four players in, in front of him, and he has goalie. So he had only small space, and he was able to finish his chance from that moment, from that angle. That's really good. I mean, that shows his composure. Despite his young, his good composure, and also good finish. And here's the crazy thing. I think he scored three goals this season for us in La Liga, despite playing almost non-existent minutes. We did mention that Alex Kirkland was pitch side today. It's a good job we're only coming to you now, Alex, because it was so loud at the end of the game, we probably wouldn't have been able to hear you. Tell us a bit more about what was going on there. Yeah, the, the whistles were ringing out around the uh, Stadio Nuevo Los Carmenes here. Granada fans, not happy, not a good day for them at all. Their relegation confirmed, as you say, even before we kicked off here and then chipping four goals against Real Madrid. And this was, I mean, it was very, very comfortable for Real Madrid in the end. Let's be honest, Granada offered very little. I mean, Madrid played well, scored some nice goals, but the defending at times from, from Granada, they made it very easy for, for Real Madrid. So for Granada, it was kind of an unlucky fixture. Just think about, it. you are already relegated and you have to play against Real Madrid at your home. Because today, the way Real Madrid played today, 
it felt like there was no defense by Granada. Every time Madrid was attacking, there's no obstacle from Granada. Like, we were just walking. It's like Real Madrid was playing in Sunderland team. Maybe it just showed why they got where they get it, right? Maybe they deserve it based on how they played. Overall, this season, not just today. A quick comment about Brahim Diaz is that when we sold Asensio and got Brahim back, I think that's the best decision we have done last season. Quickly, Alex, on Brahim Diaz there, while we are talking about him, he's done exactly what's been asked of him this season off the bench and he showed how important he is to this team. What happens next season if Mbappe does come in? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a nice kind of problem to, to have as a, as a coach, isn't it, to have those sort of options. I've got to say, I've been really pleasantly surprised by, by Brahim Diaz this season. I knew he was a, a good player when he when he arrived. You guys would have seen more of him playing for, for Milan than I did. But my question was, was he he's a really talented player? Was he good enough? Was he Real Madrid quality? I think the answer emphatically has been yes this season. And we saw that today. We saw the ability that he's got and he's made absolutely the most of the chances he's got for Madrid this season. He didn't get many chances in the first half of the season. He's got a lot more game time in the second half because he sort of demanded it with his with his performances. And he's shown that he can be really useful either starting games like this when Ancelotti wants to rotate or coming off the bench and, and making a difference in, in big games as well. When the team needs a player to shake things up, shake, take things up and they need goals, he's been one of the players that Ancelotti has turned to pretty frequently in the second half of the season. What happens with Mbappe? Well, I guess they're not they're not exactly the same kind of player, are they? I, I know what you mean. They can operate in similar positions in terms of being wide forwards, but I think uh, there is a bit of flexibility there. You could see them fitting into the same the same team at times. So to add with that point, I have to say it's not just Mbappe who's joining Madrid next season. Hendrik is also joining Madrid, so which will affect a lot of players' position in this team. However, I don't think Brahim's position would be much different what he had this season. For example, this season, he was never the main 11 player, right? He was like a good sub player or when you needed some player got injured, he could play that role, right? But he was never the D11 player. So I still think he will play the same role next season. I don't think that will change because here's the thing. A lot of players, a few players might leave next season, right? Second of all, even though hypothetically we predict that, okay, every players we have will be fit 100%, they will always be available. But in reality, that's not the case, right? You will have a lot of players will be injured, some players will be suspended for different reasons. So we'll have good healthy squad if a lot of players are in the squad. Because what is the goal of Real Madrid? To be the dominant team in Europe, to be the best team in Europe. And to achieve that, like three peat era, you have to have two best squad. Like even B team has to be the best squad in Europe. And to achieve that, we need players like Bahim Diaz, we need players like Hendrik, we need players like Ada Kuller. They will help us. Many coaches would love to have that headache. But what do you think of the future there for Brahim Diaz Luis? Honestly, I would love to see him week in and week out. Uh, since uh, the moment he arrived to Real Madrid, I, I was watching him and following him last year uh, in AC Milan, and he's one of those players who brings something extra, something special. He's uh, very unpredictable, and you can see that he can play on a role a little bit higher on the pitch, or he can drag uh, down, get the ball, and create from, from there. Nice combination, good uh, to fit uh, uh, with the ball ability and also finishing. So I would love to see him. Is he is he gonna have those minutes at Real Madrid? I don't think so. I think that if he wants to continue growing, if he wants to become a better player, wants to um, uh, to get more minutes, he should, or I, I think that he will look for, for something uh, somewhere else. So as I already pointed out this discussion that I don't think Rahim will be impacted by the addition of new players. I think he will get, have the same amount of game time he's having this season. Because Brahim is an impactful player. He's not just one squad player, right? He's he can impact the game like not most of the players can impact. Like he has a different type of skills. So which is really useful for Real Madrid. Also for his development or growth, I think the amount of game time he's having this season from Real Madrid, that's pretty decent. You don't need more than that to develop your growth. Do Ale if you Brahim Diaz or Adagula next season? I think it's two different cases. If I'm Arda Guler, I'm looking for the possibility of going out on a loan because the truth of the matter is for him, as good as he has been the last couple of weeks in which he has got an opportunity to play, he's not really part of their rotation. 
So when everybody's head is healthy, when everybody's fit, when everybody's ready to play, and when it becomes an important game, he is not part of the rotation. And why do I say it's different? Because Raheem Diaz is part of that rotation. And I think in Raheem Diaz, you have a player that not only should he stay, but Real Madrid would want him to stay desperately because he can resolve issues for you. If Jude Bellingham is injured, he can play in that position. If Rodrigo is injured, he can play in that position. He can play different roles in the attacking half that allow you to have some flexibility. It is the perfect player for Real Madrid to have coming off the bench. Of course, this is not the role that Brahim Diaz wants. But guess what? It is Real Madrid. So what's better? To be part of the rotation of Real Madrid or to be a starter in a mid-table team? And that is the sort of question that he has to ask himself. If I were Brahim Diaz, I would stick with Real Madrid because as Luis pointed out in the pregame, this Real Madrid team is building not only for the now, but for the future. And he can be part of that rotation into the future. Brahim Diaz has been outstanding in the role that he has had. Ele totally nailed it. Like, I agree every possible point he made here. Every part. Like, every point is on part. I can't disagree single point. I don't think Fahim's position will be affected next season. Again, I repeat. The other part he said, the only player who might should be worried or concerned is Arda Gola. I kind of agree because you have Andre coming who can play a striker and right winger position, which is Arda Gola is playing right now, right? Right winger position. So if Arda wants to have more game time, more frequent game time, it's ideal for him to find another club, in La Liga particularly, as a loan. I think that would be ideal for him. Being said that, I think he can still play in another position because there's rumor that Modric might leave after this season. Ceballos might leave. So if those two leave, that means there's a position at midfield. Another position Ada can play, right? Mid, right? He can play in center midfield, which is, I think, his preferred choice. Also, to add with Ellis' point about Brahim Diaz that he will have enough game time at Madrid, let me give you one example. A couple of seasons ago, Fede Valverde was playing as a, like a sub, right? He was playing secondary role. All right, now see, look at him. If you want to play at Real Madrid, you have to be patient. That's the key. A lot of players did not have the patience and they had to leave. Like, say, Odegaard, who is playing at Arsenal, he did not have the patience. He did not have the patience to fight for his place. So he had to leave. OK, let's talk about that Champions League final then. How did Thibaut Courtois look today for you, Alex? Yeah, he did well. He did what he had to do, which wasn't all that much. Admitted, there were two good saves, I thought, in the first half. One was the ball that was sort of looping over his head and he reached it and tipped it over the bar. And the other one was a, was a save deflected, I think, off Camavinga. Came at him quite fast at the near post. Well, to be honest, Courtois did not have to do much today because we played a relegated team. So he's not tested. Now here's one question, all the Madridistas are divided. Should Courtois play in Champions League final? I think the decision is not mine, not yours as a fan. The decision has to be taken by our coach. This coach is the one who makes the decision, right? If the coach thinks Courtois is ready to play final, then he will play. If coach thinks, no, Lunin has done enough for this team this season, Lunin deserves it, absolutely, I agree. So as long as Carlo is fine, anyone he thinks deserve the chance, I'll go for it. But if you ask me what's my personal choice, for Courtois, I'm kind of divided. One point I'm thinking, okay, Courtois is the best goal in the world, right? If he's fit, he should play. He's like a Ronaldo Messi of goalie. So when you have the best player, if he's ready, he's fit, why shouldn't he play? In contrast, if you think about flip side, okay, Lunin has done immense job. If you look at his stat, like save every stat, every goalie stat, he's phenomenal. Like he has even better stat, in some stats, better than Courtois. So why shouldn't he play? I mean, that's also a good viable option. Also regarding performance today, there's nothing to say from my point of view, because it's like watching relax without any purpose, because we have nothing to lose. Nothing to gain from this match, just watching some youngsters play, which is fun. Anyway, let me know, what did you think about our performance today?